Obedient Church of God, broadcasting worldwide on the internet. I can tell by your eyes that you've probably been crying for him. Yes, Father has been crying for 6,000 years because you're so disobedient. And the stars in the sky don't mean nothing to you. Genesis 1.14 means nothing to you. Lights will mark days, not phony international date lines. It's the only word, church in the whole world that doesn't move God's Sabbath to Friday with the phony international dateline. In the sky, don't mean nothing to you. It's just a mirror. Genesis 1.14, you can't even get the first book of the Bible right. Lights will mark days, not man's rules. in the whole world that is following this Bible as it is written. We are the only congregation in this world that doesn't move God's Sabbath day to Friday with a phony 1883 international date line. Combined with, we follow God's commandment to worship on New Month Day, look it up in your Bible, Ezekiel 46, 3. You shall dot 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 worship dot dot on New Month Day. 
We're the only congregation off of all the worldwide offshoots that knows the difference between the Lord's Supper and the Passover and celebrates both on the correct day. Lord's Supper is two days before the Passover. And the Passover is on the 14th, not on the beginning of the 14th, right after the 13th, and not on the 15th, but on the 14th, as your Bible commands in Deuteronomy. And it's 19 minutes before the start of the 15th, so that Father can wash you up clean before the Days of Unleavened Bread, just 15, five minutes before, because 19 minutes before the sun set, you take the Passover by the time you read your scriptures and then take your bread and then read some more scriptures and take your wine, bread I mean your matzos, your unleavened bread, and then take more scriptures and then take your wine for the remission of sins. That time, 10, 15 minutes have gone by, and then you have repented. You've taken the elements, the bread and the wine, and then three to four minutes later, the days of unleavened bread start, where you make sure you don't fall into the mud again. God has a perfect system if you follow his Bible word for word for word. And in doing so, today, is Savan 1, New Month Day. It's the 31st of May, 2014. We, the obedient Church of God, are the church that also keeps the four fasts of the Lord that you will read in Zechariah. Now, why won't your ministers follow the Bible? Why won't they follow Ezekiel 46.3? You shall worship on New Month Day. Why won't they have the four fasts of the Lord in Zechariah? Why do they refuse and continue to neglect and refuse to have the four fasts of the Lord? No, the only answer is they are of their father, the devil. And the devil has deceived the old world, and he has deceived your ministers. Now in Zechariah 8, verse 18, Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Thus says the Lord. Who said that? Who said that? Read your Bible. Who said that? The Lord said that. Thus saith the Lord. The fast of the fourth month, that's one. The fast of the fifth month, two. The fast of the seventh month, and four. The fast of the tenth month shall be joy and gladness and cheerful feasts. Who said that? God said that. And your ministers refused to follow what God said. And the fast of the fourth month is coming up in July. So you don't have to concern yourself yet. But the point is, we, the obedient church of God, follow this Bible. And your ministers lie and say they follow the Bible when they don't. Because they are not having new month day, Ezekiel 46.3, either. Hmm. Wonder what's wrong with them. Okay? Could they be deceived by the devil? Could the, their wish be to do the bidding of the devil? We are here to set the record straight. We are the Romans 9.28 short work. We are restoring all things. We've restored the Sabbath day in half of the world by moving it back to the seventh day where the phone international dateline moved it to the sixth day. Day, Friday in 1883 and yet your ministers will try to find ways to worm around it well they can't 
because this Bible says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, and everyone, just like in the first century, has to wait until the sun goes down in their country before they start the Sabbath day, or else Yeshua would arrive in Australia before he arrived in Jerusalem. Because Australia is a day ahead of us. You, know, you fly out of LAX and poof, the day jumps ahead. It's magic, it's magic, it's magic. It's not magic, it's satanic. Well, your ministers are having all of their members work on God's holy Sabbath day in half of the whole world. And indeed, they're refusing to celebrate New Month Day and indeed they don't follow Deuteronomy 16 16 three times three times you shall appear at a headquarters site if you have the funds available if you can if it's possible three times a year they disobey Deuteronomy 16 16 they disobey Zechariah and the four fasts of the Lord they disobey the test commandment, you shall worship. <laughs> what can we say, eh? What can we say? Your ministers are the servants of the devil. We're the end time work here in order to be a witness to them, against them, and a way, a means for you to repent so that you could be sealed. You know what it says? In Isaiah 8, 16, you know, seal the law among my disciples. And why is that important? Because you want to have the mark of God on you. You want to have God's sign on you. Ezekiel 20, 12, Ezekiel 20, 20. Sabbaths are a sign between God and man. We are the only ones in this whole world that are keeping the Sabbath day on the seventh day throughout the world. We have a Pakistani congregation that God deliberately gave it to us all the way around the world just before you hit Jerusalem again as the day marches on going to the seventh day by the shadow of the sun for the bringing on the next day, the last place on earth before you're hitting Jerusalem again, Israel again, you're 2,200 hours in Pakistan so that we converted the Pakistan congregation to follow God's Sabbath day. They stopped celebrating it on Friday and started celebrating it on Saturday, which by the way means that that same applies to the holy days. The same applies to Pentecost. So all the churches of God will be celebrating Pentecost in half the world on the wrong day, even if they followed God's crescent moon, which was cited this last Friday night on ER 30. See, you're either going to obey God and be one of his disciples, or you going to have to have your head cut off in the tribulation and then hope and then hope God just might put you into the resurrection but you certainly won't be the bride of Christ and we've preached on this before you might end up being locked outside where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth or if you're lucky you might end up being one of the guests you might end up being one of the guests. That isn't guaranteed. But if you want to be his bride, you have got to be spotless because Yeshua HaMashiach isn't going to marry a spiritual whore. A spiritual whore who moves his Sabbath day to Friday in half the world. A disobedient whore who when his back is turned refuses to follow the Bible. As Ezekiel 46, 3 says, you shall worship on New Month Day. 
and a spiritual whore who refuses to follow the four fasts of the Lord, and a spiritual whore who follows the satanic Sephiroth count out of the satanic Kabbalah that even the Jews call the Book of Mysticism. It's a cult. It's totally a cult. And yet one minister has got all his members practicing the Kabbalah. So you can add Triumph Prophetic Ministries name to all of the witches because the witches practice the Kabbalah and so does Triumph Prophetic Ministries. And that's witchcraft. Now I've showed this before from other sites, but I'll pull up and I know you can pull up, you know, many sites that say cyber witchcraft or just plain witchcraft. So let's hold it up for the cameras here. See the heading? It says witchcraft. For camera one, for camera two. Witchcraft. Cyber witchcraft. Now, let's turn the page and you'll see the Cifero tree. Right there for camera one, camera two. Pull back and we should be able to get it onto both cameras. See the Sifarot count tree? Chassad and Tahad. Same thing above. Another description of the tree. It's satanic. Because you are supposed to have God's Holy Spirit leading you into repentance. The Spirit leads you into repentance. Not a Sifarot tree that the witches use to balance themselves. You know, and to fear it into Melkuth, and Melkuth into Hod, and Hod into Jassad, and they've got 22 channels going back and forth, because it's the occult. That's why you have it written down to balance Melkuth with Jafarit, to balance the feminine with the masculine Melkuth. Your minister has you practicing witchcraft. And he won't discuss it. He keeps yapping away with his big ratchet jaw. Keeps yapping away how to love one another. Well, first you repent, and then you get forgiveness of sins. Because if you don't repent, you end up like Jezebel. You know, Jezebel was practicing the occult too. And I can guarantee you Jezebel will not be in the kingdom of heaven. You know, the question comes up sometime, well, are, are some people going to be burning in, up in hell? Yes. And one of them is Jezebel. And on today's sermon, today's broadcast, we'll go over unrepentance and what it means to be unrepentant and what it means to harden your heart. But first, this being New Moon Day and a double header today. It's a Sabbath day and it is New Moon Day. So some of you might know what that means. You know, blow on the trumpet on your solemn feast day. Shofar Prophetico, the most magnificent shofar in the world. It's four to five feet long and it gives the alarms of war, it gives the call to assembly, it gives the staccato alarm to war, assemble, war, war, war. So we play that on New Month Day because God commands us to. He clearly says, Psalm 81, you know, on your solemn feast day. And today is a solemn feast day. Read it for yourself in Ezekiel 46.3. So sit back and listen to Shofar Prophetico, the most magnificent Shofar. And this is a ram's horn for the new listeners. An actual ram's horn that looks about five feet long with a magnificent sound and a beautiful, beautiful curl on it with a bell on the end of it, bell opening that looks like it's about five to seven inches diameter, if I do it like this. So sit back and listen.
to your call to assembly. Principalities in high places. We get time today, we will tell you about Pergamum, the place of Satan, the high place of Pergamum. Just like the Dev Denver Airport is a high place, the one mile high. That is the American seat of Satan. We'll tell you all about that. You know, you don't understand why all of the diabolical murals on the walls of and ceilings of the Denver airport. Well, that's because it's the high place and it's a seat of the devil. Just like Pergamum is the seat of the devil. You'll read that in your Bible. We'll tell you about that if there's time. But first, this being new month day and also the sabbath day we have just followed god's command of psalm 81 and when we follow and you follow god's command he is well pleased with you he knows he can trust you so i'll take your hymnals want to sing out on this because it's blowing a trumpet on your solemn feast day. Here's our songbook for camera one. The original Bible hymnal from 1934, before the words were changed, we got the last copy in the world of the original hymnal with the original words that are more powerful than the watered down words that are in the worldwide newer hymnals. But since you don't have our 1934 copy, we will use the worldwide copy that you can pull off the internet. So now sing out the Father in praise of his holy name. Praise him with a psalm. That's the first words. So if you don't have a hymnal, follow along and for sure sing the first line here. Praise the eternal with a psalm. Sing to the God of Jacob. You're singing to God the Father. At the judgment seat, he's going to ask, why didn't you sing to me? You know, if your child sang to you, wouldn't that make you happy? Would make Father happy? Don't deprive him of his happiness. Sing out. Hymn 62, Praise the Eternal with a Psalm.
since this is New Month Day, we open with that hymn, and then we have the opening prayer, and then we have the other hymns. So remain standing, face the north heavens, where Father and Yeshua and the 24 elders are, and the four living creatures, and the heavenly hosts, and the myriad of angels. Raise your arms in worship of Father and Yeshua. Close your eyes in sincerity. Bow your head in humility. Almighty, most merciful Father El Shaddai, we thank you for this, your new month day and your Sabbath day. We double Sabbaths because the new months are holy to you also, the new month day. Thank you for that knowledge. Thank you for the ability to please you. Thank you for teaching the obedient Church of God so that we can teach others. Father, thank you for all the things you do for us that we're not even aware of. Thank you for your healing power. Thank you for healing the little kitten that got crushed this week. And we thought she would die. But after prayer to you, she is right as rain and scampering around. And she was crushed pretty bad by about 200 pounds. So Father, thank you for even healing the little kitten. Well, we put our faith in you, Father, and we thank you for being our dad. We thank you for being loving to us. And thank you for you looking after us as your little small flock. We know we are small, and we thank you for that because that coincides with what you state in your Bible, the little flock. So thank you for our 200 members in Pakistan and other members scattered in Australia and New Zealand and across the United States and in Canada also, and indeed around the world as we've had over 20,000 hits on the internet. Father, please inspire the service today, both the hearing and the speaking. Help the people to understand that by pleasing you, that everyone also can be in harmony, and there's only one religion, one faith, one baptism, one true Lord and Yeshua HaMashiach, one true God. So now, Father, ask you to look after those brethren in Pakistan, the 200 plus of them. Oh, eight of them murdered five years ago before they met us, before you led us to them. So please continue to keep them safe. Very dangerous area. They're killing people that are not Muslim out there, of a Muslim face. So please protect our brethren. We always put that in the opening prayer. Father, put this service in your hands now. Ask you for inspiration again on the speaking and the hearing, and especially on the hearing on the videotapes, because that's when most people listen. Help them to understand that they cannot add anything to your Bible. They cannot add a Sephiroth count, especially as it comes out of the Satanic Kabbalah, the Book of Mysticism. Father, open my friends and former acquaintances' eyes so that they can repent or let it be a witness against them on Judgment Day. We are preaching your word. Keep opening up the Bible to us, to all of the new rediscovered truths you want us to teach. We thank you for this opportunity, and we thank you for the little flock, the obedient Church of God. We turn this service over to your hands now, in Yeshua HaMashiach's holy righteous name, our soon arriving King of the world. Yeah, they have a little baby Jesus meek and mild away in the manger, no crib for a bed. The little Lord Jesus lays down his sweet head. 
headline in the next seven years or more. Yeshua returns, kills 200 million citizens. <laughs> Way in a manger, don't crib for a bed, the little Lord Jesus lay down his sweet head. That's not how it works. You have got to be an obedient disciple or he will slay you. Indeed, the sword of the word will slay you by the words in this book will slay you. And right now you are being slain by Ezekiel 46.3 because you don't celebrate New Month Day that's commanded in Ezekiel 46.3. And this being indeed New Month Day, it is fitting that we should indeed give you some information about New Month Day, especially for the new listeners. So let's go to the basics and turn to Ezekiel 46 and verse 3 and see what God says. Go to verse 1 and you hear, Thus says the Lord God. Who said that? Hey, who said that? God said it. Then to verse 3. Likewise, the people of the land shall worship dot 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 on dot dot the new moons. Who said that? The Lord God said that. So, you ministers better give your heads a shake. Because when God tells you to do something, you'd better do it. And if you're going to try to wiggle out of it, you can't. Because verse 3 says, The people of the land shall worship dot 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 on the Sabbaths and the new moons. So if you want to cross out the new moons, you lunkhead ministers, then you've got to cross out the Sabbaths also. And then you could say you don't have to worship on God's holy Sabbath day because you can cross out the new moons, then you can cross out the holy Sabbath day. Which one's it going to be? You can't have it both ways. So uh, think on that. And the reason is it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have new month day because you have an extra day whereby you can worship Father and spend time with Father every month on New Month Day. And indeed, today being New Month Day, it's a double header, so it's an even more important day. It is even more important. So now, that we are in the throne room and we have introduced ourselves to Father, let us tell him and Yeshua that he is our rock, he is our salvation, his words were thus saith the Lord, his words, this Bible, his way of life is our salvation, he is our rock. So please rise again and turn to page number 50 and tell him he is your rock, your foundation and strength. And there are other words in here that he is your fort, he is your refuge. He will rescue you. Rescue shall come from my God alone. Sing out and follow along with the words because on the judgment day, you are going to be asked why you refused to sing out. And this is your offering. The offering is the fruit of your lips. 
That is your offering. So are you going to refuse to give an offering? The fruit of your lips? I think not. Therefore sing out. God is my rock, my salvation. sing and praise God this being a double header day joyfully sing and praise Psalm 66 
sang out. And now, turn to page number 60. O thou shepherd of Israel art, because he is the shepherd. That is why you follow every jot and tittle of the shepherd's writing. The shepherd wrote a book. It's all in here, folks. You've got to follow your manual, or don't call him your shepherd then. Call Satan your shepherd. Satan who wrote the Kabbalah by automatic writing. And he's your shepherd. But if you have God as your shepherd, sing out. O thou shepherd of Israel art. All You stop doing things that aren't in God's Bible. If it's not in the Bible, you don't add it. You don't add a turkey God day to this Bible. Seven days are the Feast of Tabernacles. You don't add an eighth day, which counting Shemini Atzeret would make it nine days. Because that destroys the whole plan of God, the Father. And it's totally pagan to have a turkey God day. And you've got Sky Father's Day coming up in June. I'll tell you more about that on the next broadcast. And you had Mother Goddess Day, the day of the great whore that you celebrate to your dear mother, the day of the great Hur Gaia, who birthed all the gods and goddesses, the spring feast of Gaia, you celebrate to your mother. It's ridiculous. Look, if it's not in God's Bible, you don't do it. And that includes the Sifarot count. Now the Sifarot count, we showed you the picture. We showed you the picture that it is totally satanic. We showed it to you last week also. Other pictures from other sites, other witchcraft sites, other witchcraft books. Even if there wasn't an internet, there still would be in the witchcraft books of the Kabbalah. That is per perverting the gospel of Christ. 
you know, the gospel of Christ is that the Holy Spirit will lead you to repentance. Not a Cifero tree! And we showed you. Showed you last week, show you again. Cyber witchcraft. Then, on the next page, while you're practicing witchcraft, there's your Cipherote. There's your ten Cipherotes. There's ten of them. If you count them, you'll see there's ten of them. Camera one, camera two. Then on the bottom of the page, you see it displayed again. Could it be any clearer? Unless, unless you don't know what the word witchcraft means. You know, you got a problem with English? You can't understand witchcraft? So, we got one minister, Triumph Prophetic Ministries, who just keep on going into training in the craft, witchcraft. And that's what Kabbalists do. That's, we, we named off, you know, the actors and the actresses that are into the Kabbalah, and George Bush carries the Kabbalah around with him. He's a practicing witch. George Bush is a practicing witch. He cast a spell on the whole United States. That's right. That's when he had the children chanting on 9-11, Kite must hit steel. Kite must hit steel. It was unbelievable. And he had his book in his hand. He's reading out of My Pet Goat. But it's upside down. He's not reading it normally. He's got it inverted upside down. And that's Bathomet, the sign of Bathomet, of magical power. That's what he's all about. See, I understand these things. Now, if any of you new listeners out there are watching today, I'm wearing black because I'm in mourning. I'm in mourning for all my ex-friends and ex-associates. And I can tell you, new, new listeners, you're going to have to give up family and friends, and you're going to have to love God more than you love your mother. So if you're worried about insulting your mother or coming up on Sky Father's Day, insulting your father by not giving him a call or a gift present on Sky Father's Day, well, into the lake of fire you'll go. Because then you can't be Yeshua's disciple. And he said, anyone who loves their father or mother more than I cannot be my disciple. So if you're going to insult Yeshua, who gave his life for you, by you practicing a Baal Sky Father's Day, so that you do not upset your dear father, earth, your father on this earth, your natural father, but you want to ignore your spiritual father, then you are loving your natural father more than the words of your spiritual father, which says, Jeremiah 10 to, you shall not learn the way of the Gentile. You shall not learn Father's Day, Sky Father's Day, which incidentally is right at the longest day of the year. Just like Christmas is at the shortest day of the year in that season. To Baal, to bring back the sun god. So in the summertime, you have the longest day of the year. And then you have the feast in the spring to Gaia, the goddess that gave birth to all the gods and goddesses. And then in the fall, you have Turkey God Day to Ra Osiris. You know, the goose, the cosmic goose that laid the egg that Ra Osiris sprang forth from. So you are totally steeped in the occult, Triumph Pro, and all of the offshoots also of the different worldwide breakaways. All of them are moving God's Sabbath day to Friday, and that's a fact. Because in the first century, there wasn't any international dateline. Everyone waited for the sun to go down. That is a fact. And in 1883, 
man moved the Sabbath day, God's Sabbath day, to Friday in half of the world. And your ministers won't put it back. They refuse to. They're of their father, the devil. They'd rather obey the devil than obey God the Father and his book that says the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. We're here to restore all things and we are restoring them. And if any minister of yours says we aren't, he's a damnable liar and he's just broken the ninth commandment by bearing false witness. So realize we are the little flock and we are the Romans 9.28 work, the short work of God the Father to restore all things. So today, restoring New Moon Day. And indeed, the New Moon was sighted in Israel last night by Mark Harris, May 30th, 2014. Today is May 31st. States on Friday, May 30th, 2014, the new moon was sighted from Israel, sighted by William and Tina Onrikseck, O-N-D-R-I-C-E-K, Devorah Levine, John Jenkins, Jacob Boer, B-O-E-R, and Katie Jenkins and Bruce Brill, B-R-I-L-L. -L. You see, you've got to have two or more witnesses. And there isn't any potential visibility allowed. You cite the present the same way Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and Yeshua, and Paul cited it with your own two eyes or the reports from Jerusalem that are made using their own two eyes, the witnesses using their own two eyes without any binoculars, without any airplanes flying above clouds, any nonsense like that. And then you will be in harmony with God's Bible that there has to be two witnesses to verify a matter. Not potential visibility that does it by calculation. Now, you either want the truth or you want to be a hypocrite. And we've got so many ministers that lie and say that they obey this Bible when they don't even follow the seventh-day Sabbath in half of the world, as proven by them using a phony international dateline. They're refusing the ways of God, the days of God. They're refusing New Month's Day. They're refusing... You know, Zechariah 8.15's uh, Four Fasts of the Lord, they're refusing to have the Lord's going away dinner, and instead they're just having the Passover. Well, you have to have both, because both are in the Bible. You have the Lord's going away dinner, and two days later you have the Passover. And... You have the Passover on the 14th, 19 minutes before sundown. And point number five, Deuteronomy 16, 16, three times a year, if you have the funds, you appear before God. Now, Pentecost is coming up on Wednesday, which is the 4th of Sivan. Now, how do we know that it's going to be coming up on Wednesday? Well, we've been counting the barley measures. We've been counting the cups. 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 Doesn't say Sephiroth in your Bible. It says count 49 cups. So today, Savan 1 is the 46th cup. Sunday's 47. Monday's 48, Tuesday's 49, and Wednesday is 50. Starts the evening before, by the way, for the new listeners. So we will be here, same time, same place, on the 4th of May to celebrate the Pentecost, the arrival of God's Holy Spirit.
Now, if the disciples were not all gathered together on the day of Pentecost, all of them, on the correct day, at the correct moedim, which means the appointed time. Moedim means appointed time. You know, if you've got an appointed time when the train's going to pull into the station or pull out of the station, you've got to be there at that moedim, or you're going to miss your trip. That simple. So the disciples didn't miss their trip. They counted 49 cups. That's how you count the omer. An omer means measure. An omer of barley is a measure of barley. Don't get all twisted up with the ministers talking about Sifirot. And Christian, they're actually talking about mysticism because it's coming out of the satanic Kabbalah. So since this is going to be your last um, association with the Sifirot count, the satanic Sifirot count, realize that the Kabbalah, the tree of life, which is the Otz, O-T-Z, Shame in Hebrew, C-H-A-I-M. This is what mystics use. And that's what neo-pagans use. And it's like a deciduous tree in the fall or winter, you know, a tree that loses its leaves. The tree resembles a coat rack. Bare branches ready to receive the garments one chooses to bring to hang upon it in an old fashion such as a cosmic filing cabinet of a cult with the different spheres being the individual drawers now certainly the sifirot corresponds to that you're trying to do self-improvement by meditation you know the same as Eastern meditation and it is giving a spiritual fast path that modifies time and people who are currently studying it here's here's what the tree of life Kabbalistic site is saying, the tree of life, the Sifrod, is a living system in that each culture and spiritual path using it modifies it and keeps it relevant to the time and people who are currently studying it. You know, anything that would be carved in stone was relevant to uh, people, like the Ten Commandments. But this Sifrod count is not in God's Bible. So you don't use it. Anything that is not in God's Bible, you don't touch. Because you don't know that it is satanic. And you get drawn in. And it's actually frightening. You know, the Sifro count is frightening to traditional Kabbalists. It is associated with D-A apostrophe A-T-H, or knowledge. And it speaks to the people. See, let's lay it out here. It speaks to the people, because each Sifirot has multitudes, bear note, when I say bear note, you put this in your bear note book, so that you know what you're doing, what you shouldn't be doing. Each of the spirit each of the shift sifirot has multitudes of correspondences with deities, plants, animals, angelic beings, body parts, thought process, and archetypes ad infinitum. The imageries of the tree have correlations to most of the subjects common to Western mystery traditions, of which witchcraft is one, including tarot and alchemy.
Now, the problem is, if that wasn't bad enough, we come to wisdom, C-H-O-K-M-A-H, Chokma, by viewing knowledge, D-A apostrophe A-T-H, through the lens of understanding Bina. This is all part of the Sifarot, of the Kether, and the crown. And it gives you choices. Choices for shaping yourself. And it is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because it's trying to get you to balance yourself. And you balance yourself out using the Sifarot count. It's the knowledge of good and evil. It is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Bear note, you are eating of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil when you use the Sephiroth Kabbalah 10 sphere count with the 22 channels going back and forth into each other in magical mysticism. That's how serious it is. You are using the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That is what the ten sephirot orbs on the tree consist of. Good and evil. Now we in the obedient church of God are trying to pull ministers, this one particular minister out of the mud, but he just refuses to even discuss it. He'll give sermons for two hours, he'll give a sermon for two hours, and not even discuss the origin of the Sephirot. Not even mention the origin of the Sephirot. Not tell you one fact that I told you, so that you can know where it came from and what it's all about. Instead, he will totally ignore the issue as if it doesn't exist. Well, he's practicing Satanism. He's practicing Satanism and he'll die in his sins unless he repents. Now, I've got concern for him. I've got concern for lost souls. You know, the... No, even Elijah was, was sent by God to rebuke Israel for their sins and used various methods to try to get their attention. And the people were steeped in sin and error. The people were, the churches of God, the offshoot churches of God are steeped in Sky Father's Day coming up in June. They're steeped in Mother Goddess Day. They're in the springtime. They're steeped in Turkey God Day. And now we've got another minister, Triumphetic Ministries, Bill Dankenbrink, steeped in Kabbalah counting of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's time to wake them up so that they can see what they're doing before it's too late. And that is love. That is concern for the lost souls, for the lost people. We are trying to pull you out of the mud, but you're all in apostasy. You're all in apostasy, and you, you think that you are doing God's will by practicing a satanic Kabbalah, which even the Jews call the Book of Mysticism. Could that give you a clue when it's called the Book of Mysticism? Here's the point. Judgment is now on you, because you are on of the house of the Lord, 1 Peter 4, 17. You know, you begin at my sanctuary, Ezekiel 9, verse 6. Judgment is now upon you. So you'd better stop your Kabbalah count and go back to counting the number of cups. 
stop your satanic tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because 1 Peter 4, 17, let's read it together. It tells you clearly that judgment is now on the house of the Lord. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of the Lord off the offshoots, offshoots of the worldwide church of God. And if it begins with us, what will the end of those who do not obey the gospel of the Lord? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, what will the ungodly and the sinner? Where will the ungodly and the sinner appear? You are all in apostasy with your mother goddess day, your sky father's day, your turkey god day, your cabal account, and indeed you're refusing to celebrate God's new month day. Well, where did the Kabbalah originate? Let's go into the basic here, because, you know, we won't be discussing it again, because your, your sinning will be against you up for this full year, a full load of sin, up until Pentecost, which is on Wednesday, June the 4th. So today being May the 31st, this is your last chance to hear the truth. Where did the Kabbalah originate? Originate. It's also known as the Hermetic Kabbalah. There are a number of different traditional spellings. You know, the Jewish spelling, if you're making notes, K-A-B-B-A-L-A-H. That's the traditional Jewish spelling. Now, the Christian uh, s satanic spelling is C-A-B-A-L-A. And they're just uh, transliterations of the cultic spelling. Now, who's the founder? Isaac the Blind. Isn't that a great name? Isaac the Blind. It's not known for sure if he's the original founder, but he is considered the father of the Kabbalah. His date and birth, date of his birth and death is the 1160, born to 1236 AD. Why and how was it founded? The first Kabbalistic ideas emerged in ancient times as they were an attempt of the Merkaba. M-E-R-K-A-B-A-H mystics to reach what they call the higher throne of God. Isaac the Blind was the first to name Jewish mysticism Kabbalah and he formed a scholarly group based on the tradition. Now, which groups use the Kabbalah? Which groups use the Sifarot count? They are the Knights Templar, the Neoplatists, the Pagoreanists, P-Y-T-H-A-G-O-R-E-A-N-I-S-T-S, -E the Rosicrucians, they're all occult, occult. Tantra, the English Order of the Golden Dawn, the French magician Eliphas Levi, E L I P H A S L E V I, pronounced it Levi. And they practice ritual magic, names of power, the magic circle, ritual implements, consecration, evocation of spirits, etc. Also, the celebrities, Madonna, Brittany, Demi, and Paris have all become followers of the Kabbalah. 
along with Triumph Prophetic Ministries. Right in there with the Knights Templar, the Rosicrucians, the French Magician, and Madonna. Look, these ministers are stealing your eternal life if they've got you practicing the Kabbalah. Kabbalism is a system of Jewish mysticism. Better note, Kabbalism is a system of Jewish mysticism and magic and is the foundational element in modern witchcraft. Virtually all of the great witches and sorcerers of this century were Kabbalists. This is by William J. Shonen Bellen, S-C-H-N-O-E-B-E-L-E-N, -E -E The Dark Side of Freemasonry. You know who also used the Kabbalah was Joseph Smith and the Mormons. Yeah. It wasn't enough that they had the Bible, they had to have the Book of Mormon. It's demonic. It's not enough that you've got God's Holy Bible telling you how to repent, what the fruits of the Spirit are. You've got to have the Kabbalah, the demonic Kabbalah. You know, to qualify on the Mormon side of it here, we have Joseph Smith and the Kabbalah, the occult connection, and uh, there's a quote. This work was originally published in Dialogue, a journal of Mormon thought, volume 27, number 3, fall 1994, pages 117 to 194. The paper received considerable notice and in 1995, the Mormon History Association recognized Joseph Smith and the Kabbalah, the occult connection, the occult connection, the occult connection with its annual award for the best article in Mormon studies. There is an ongoing demand for this paper, but unfortunately Dialogue sold out of its entire printing in the fall 1994 issue within a few weeks. Most academic libraries will have Dialogue in their collection of journals for those seeking a print copy. So we've got Joseph Smith and the Mormons practicing Kabbalism, and we've got Triumph Prophetic Ministries practicing Kabbalism demonic Kabbalah. You know, the Kabbalah is largely based on the Zohar. And this was all done by automatic writing. You know, the pen moved by itself, just in the hand of the scribe, and it was all written automatically. And it, it's written in an esoteric manner, which basically means that uh, no one can understand it unless it's explained to you. It simply means that you can't understand it by reading it. Someone has to explain it to you. And its interpretation is at the whim of any occultist who wants to manipulate dumb people. In contrast, you know, your Bible, the Word of God, has definite meaning which can't be twisted if you take the Bible at face value. The Bible tells you exactly what the fruits of the spirits are. All you've got to do is follow Galatians on the fruits of the Spirit. And then you'll know whether you're in the faith or not. You don't have to use a Kabbalistic count. It's of the devil. Recognize it for what it is. It's of the devil. It's not in the Bible. And that should be enough to tell you. You see, the Word of God's Bible is up front, and it's not confusing. And there's no private interpretation. See, here's the difference between the Bible and the Kabbalah, the Bible and the Sifro tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Bible says, no prophecy, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation, 2 Peter 1.20. Now, the Kabbalah, 
is open to all types of interpretation as you're trying to balance yourself out with a Siferot count. But anyone can understand the fruit of the Spirit. Anyone can understand the Word of God if they come to Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and receive God's gift of understanding. Spirit of understanding is given to those who obey. 1 John 3, 4. Spirit of God is given to those who obey. But instead, you have Satan blinding the masses, blinding Madonna, blinding Triumph Prophetic Ministries, blinding the Mormons with occult practices. And it's part of tarot card reading. That's what the tarot card is based on. The ten Sifirot. That's why you have uh, from the <laughs> from from the two to the to the ten. That's why. That's why you have the Joker in there. That's why you have the four houses. You know, Jack, Queen, King, Ace. It's all a cult. That's how Satan blinds the masses with deception. Now, I'll make it simple. Anything that's associated with the occult is satanic, period. Anything that's associated with the occult is satanic. The Sifra wrote count is associated with the occult. Therefore, it is satanic. And it's associated with the Freemasons and George Bush. Satan is the common denominator behind all falsehood. Satan is the god of this world, 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, classic scripture. And he, through the occult organizations and false religions, blinds people. You know, and, and by the way, Joseph Smith was a mason. Yeah, Joseph Smith, bear note, the Mormon, the founder of Mormonism, was an occult member of Freemasonry. You've got to get it through your head that you're dealing with the occult when you're dealing with the Kabbalah. We've given you the information. You know, Aleister Crowley this is a great, great Satanist. I mean that in a negative way, rhetorically. Aleister Crowley wrote extensively about the Kabbalah. Kabbalah for the general public and he Crowley used the Kabbalah as here's another picture of your Sifirot count there it is see the tree and the ancient mystics how they use it well if you go back You've, into, into Satanism, you've pretty much burned your bridges with God. You've burned your bridges with God because now you're going back into Satanism with the Kabbalah. That's how serious it is. That's why I'm spending time on it. See, in plain English, let's get it down. In tradition, bear note, in traditional Kabbalism, there are ten Sephiroth. You know, although some schools teach there's a hidden 11th in the middle of the diagram. But each Sifra has different characteristics and is represented by a different Hebrew letter, which also corresponds to a number. The 10 Sifrot are connected by 22 lines known as paths, each of which carries a specific, particular meaning. Some occult traditions teach that the paths correspond to the major arcana in the tarot, in the tarot cards. It comes to life, the Sifro comes to life as a concept which covers the movement of will, force, your will, your force, and it has nothing to do with the Bible.
end of a bare note. One of the hidden things of the Cifero tree of life, knowledge of good and evil, is the shape outlined in that tree and be used to calculate names of things. If you know the true name of something, you can control it, which uh, led to medieval Kabbalists to become ritual magicians as well as inspiring medieval ritual magicians to become Kabbalists. See, with Kabbalistic secrets, the well-informed can construct magic, control the very forces of the universe, instead of relying on God's Torah, on God's holy written Bible, the Pentateuch, and in Galatians, the fruits of the Spirit. So you use all of God's Bible from beginning to end. And you do not add to it. You do not add a Kabbalistic, satanic tree of knowledge of good and evil. I don't even like holding all these papers, you know. This gives me a bad vibe. And when I first came across the Kabbalah, I determined something wasn't quite right. Something wasn't quite right when I was first told about the Kabbalah and that I should practice it. Something didn't just feel right. And the more that I delve into it, the worse it feels. So I'm gonna put these papers away. It's enough to show you the witchcraft. It's enough to show you that you are in witchcraft by showing you the pictures that I have shown you. I'll show you one more time. There's the title, Kabbalah and Occultism. Kabbalah and Occultism. And there you have it, the tree of life. Sifro, phony tree of life. Camera one, camera two. See what it says? Kabbalah and occultism. Kabbalah and occultism. You have any minister trying to tell you that the Cipro tree is not Kabbalah and not occultism. He is a liar, a damnable liar, because he's leading you straight into hell by not telling you that the Kabbalah and occultism and the Sephiroth tree are all one and the same in this, from the same book from the Zohar. I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you to understand that I've exposed the occultism of the Kabbalah. Period. I won't take any more time on it. Because we've got better things to focus on in God's Bible. Such as the New Moon Day scriptures. This being New Moon Day. So we already read Ezekiel 46.3. Now I'm going to give you the scriptures for New Moon Day so that you can know that you should worship on the new moons. 1 Samuel 20, verse 5, 1 Samuel 25, verse 5, David must sit with the king on New Moon Day and is celebrated with a dinner. And by the way, for the new listeners, we have the Kiddush on the evening of New Moon Day, the evening before. So last night I had the Kiddush. And it doesn't have to be an elaborate Kiddush. It can be, it could be a bowl of chicken noodle soup and then 
have the bread and the wine. Or it could be a 12-course dinner. The point of it is that you have the Kiddush in honor of Yeshua on New Month Day because David sat with the king on New Moon Day and that's how it's celebrated with a dinner. And it's a holy day. If you're wondering, it's a holy day because Amos, 5, Amos 8 verse 5 says, when is new moon, when is the new moon over that we may buy or sell? So rhetorically that means we can't buy and sell because the new moon is here, we can't buy and sell. When is it over? Amos 8 verse 5, so that we may buy and sell. That proves it, that it's a holy Sabbath day. Because on holy Sabbath days, you do not buy nor do you sell. First Chronicles 23, 31. You sacrifice on New Moon Day, and we sacrifice today with the fruit of our lips. We sacrificed, we gave the sacrifice, the fruit of our lips. See, the sacrifices were done away with, and the fruit of our lips. We give the sacrifice. And the incense wasn't done away with. The incense is our prayers to Father. I'll give a sermon on all this sometime. But just put it in your bear notes. Sacrifices weren't done away with. The fruit of our lips is our sacrifice today. And the incense wasn't done away with. The incense is the prayer of the saint. Continuing on with New Moon Day. Numbers 10.10 10. Blow the trumpets on New Moon Day. See, instead of teaching you the Satanic Kabbalah, I'm teaching you God's Bible. Psalm 81.3 Blow the trumpet at the time of the New Moon. At, and also, it's a feast day. Isaiah 66, 23, from one new moon, worship. Could that be any clearer? Isaiah 66, verse 23. This is in your Bible. It's a command, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, dot, 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 all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. So this is how Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, ends. This is important, because the whole world, the whole world will be celebrating New Moon Day, and this Bible says so. Let's read it in context. And it shall come to pass. Verse 23 of 66, Isaiah. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me, says the Lord. Who said that? The Lord said that. Read it again. All flesh shall worship before me. Where were you on the other new moons for the last year? Did you come before the Lord as it's commanded in the ending of Ezekiel of Isaiah 66? And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, and from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before me. Who said that? Says the Lord. See, we are preaching this book. Your ministers are not preaching this book. 
we're putting it all together. Colossians 2.16, don't let any minister judge you as to why you're keeping a new moon. Don't let them judge you. Colossians 2.16 in the New Testament says, don't let anyone judge you as to why you are keeping new moon day. Want to read it together? Colossians 2 verse 16. So let no one judge you dot 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 regarding dot dot a new moon. So you better start following God's new moon. It's in the New Testament telling, stating that no one is allowed to judge you why you are keeping the Sabbath or why you are keeping the God's new moon. You want things to go well for you. So we did a Numbers 10, 10 today. Blow on the trumpets on New Moon Day. We had the most magnificent shofar ever that I've ever heard. So there you have it. You have the witnesses of New Moon Day. I hope that you repent and you start following New Moon Day. You know, anyone who rejected Moses' law in Hebrews 10.28, anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. How much more punishment do you suppose will it be thought worthy those who have trampled the Son of God underfoot, the writer of this Bible underfoot, Yeshua HaMashiach, our Savior? Yes. You have got to repent. You have got to repent or else you've never been saved. You've got to examine yourselves whether you be in the faith or whether you be in the Kabbalistic Cipro account. 2 Corinthians 13.5 Examine yourselves whether you be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves how that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates. There is a way that seems right to a man, the way that ends in death. Proverbs 14, 12. Look, you ministers, if you claim to be saved as a minister, then why don't you follow God's new moon day? If you claim to be saved, what do you base it on? Is your salvation based on something that's in the Bible, as I've shown you from these scriptures of New Moon Day? Or is it based on something that's a Kabbalistic satanic count in a book of mysticism? Is your salvation based on the Bible or something else? Salah. Think of it. You enter into that narrow gate, Matthew 7, 13. For broad is the way, wide is the gate, wide is the gate, broad is the way that ends, that leadeth to destruction. And many of them that go into it. You know, you get Britney Spears, you get Madonna, you get Aleister Crowley, you get the Mormons, you get Triumph Prophetic Ministries, broad is the way going into the Kabbalah. I tell you, my friends, you should repent. Repent. If God is opening your eyes to what I am teaching you, please repent of your sins and turn to this book that has new moon day in it, new month day in it. We 
which we are celebrating today and don't go along with any fairy tales from your ministers. Don't be rejecting God's truth. Don't be in stubborn rebellion. This is serious in the sight of God. You practicing a Ciferot count is serious. It's serious evil. Realize that you're ignoring the word of God not to learn anything of the Gentile, anything outside of his Bible. This is very serious in the sight of God. It, remount, it amounts to rebellion and, eject, and rejection of God's truth. And <laughs> rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. You know, if that isn't bad, bad, bad enough, I've held up the pictures, Cipro Count and Witchcraft, both on the same page, both being part of each other in unison. Don't you dare practice a Sephirot satanic account from the Kabbalah, which church teaches you to disobey God. Answer, all of the churches. All of the churches teach you to obey, disobey God. Oh, they say to, that they're going to teach you to obey God. But they teach you to disobey God. Because they don't keep New Month Day. They don't keep Deuteronomy 16, 16. The three times a year. Indeed, they are leading you straight into hell by having you have the Sabbath day on Friday in half of the world. This is so serious. There's only one church, the obedient Church of God, that is teaching everyone to put the Sabbath day back to the seventh day. We are teaching you to be a disciple. Unless you want to have your own way and you refuse, you refuse to follow God's way. You know, we the obedient church of God are on the cutting edge of science and technology and it's a shame that we have to, have to use the time to be pulling you out of the mud when we could be teaching you so much more about the world and indeed the world situation. We've got a whole stack of files here where we could teach you.